Hello there, and welcome to episode 25 of the Julia the Knitter podcast. Hello, I'm Julia, and I am coming to you from a very snowy Queens, New York today, where I live with my handsome husband, my two crazy kids, and my wild beast of a dog who is off napping in her cozy little sweater today, because it is a chilly one out there. We woke up to about two inches of snow, and they're saying there's maybe three to six inches more coming tomorrow night into Monday. I'm not looking forward to that commute Monday morning. That's for darn sure. So this is a podcast mainly about knitting and whatever other crafty bits I happen to be getting into. And here we are. I'm glad you're here. Welcome back to anybody who's returning and I'm glad you found us to anybody who is just joining us for the first time. So I hope everybody's been doing all right. Let's jump right in to what I have been working on. So the last time we spoke, I was talking to you about my Coast Range socks, which was a test knit pattern for Lindsay Fowler, who is lost and fawned on Instagram. Fawned as an F-A-W-N-E-D, like the animal. And I had finished one sock, the first sock, and I showed it off beautifully. And I was on the leg of the second sock, but now I have finished the second sock. As you see, I have not woven in any ends or blocked the second sock. So here you have the blocked and not blocked version. I knit this up out of this gorgeous, 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 gorgeous yarn by Dyed in the Wool, which this is my first time using Dyed in the Wool. I've heard of her yarn for quite some time. I'm trying to get my tag so I can tell you exactly the fiber content. Um, this is her label and it says independently dyed by a woman strong business. How can I resist? The colorway is ice field and it is on her yakety yak sock base, which is a 70% merino, 20% yak and 10% nylon blend. It is so cozy. I cannot wait to block the second sock so I can get these on my feet because guys, they just feel like a dream. Like I said last time, they're not quite buttery soft like a merino would be. They have a little, you can feel the softness to them. They're, they're not rough at all. They've got that slight rustic feel of a, a BFL and that you can feel that they're definitely going to be hard wearing and I'm pretty pleased about that. Um, but yeah, they were such, this pattern was such a dream to knit up. It has since been released the pattern has been released now, but you can see it's got the leg, has this gorgeous pattern going up the front. I want to say almost a viney pattern, but it's, and it goes all the way across the top of the foot and the back has a nice slip stitch back, like as if you were doing a slip stitch heel flap and the heel flap goes all the way down to the heel flap. And then on either side, there is a cable and that goes all the way down to the bottom of the heel, as you can see. And again, the color is just stunning um, and they feel so good. I, I really enjoy working on this pattern. It was, I found that the first one was a little slow going, but once I got to the second one and I knew the pattern, I didn't have to keep checking back to see what I had to do next. Um, it, it just flew by and it was really nice, really nice to knit. It became kind of not meditative, but it was a good, it was a good knit that you didn't have to put too, too much thought about into it, especially once you finish the cable, um, down the leg and the heel flap. Once that's done, it just felt like smooth sailing from there. I feel like I had the foot done in two days and that's it. Maybe longer. I don't know. But it was a very quick knit. It was a very pleasant knit. And guys, if you haven't started knitting up that pattern, I just say, go for it, do it. I know she released another pattern that's very similar. At the, oh, at the same time, I think it was part of a collection. I cannot for the life of me remember the name of that sock. I know it begins with a T, but it has that same kind of viney textured pattern going on the back of the leg too. It doesn't have the slip stitch pattern or the cable pattern like the Coast Range socks. So they were nice. I might have to knit those up too. Um, 
And that's that. Th those are my Coast Strange socks. Check them out. Go knit them and wear them to death. And that that's it. I just love them. I have also been working on the Bennett Sisters shawl by Lindsay. Like I mentioned last time, it is a great mindless pattern. I had thought that I would have this finished by the time I recorded again, but as you'll see in a few minutes, I got I got bitten by the color work bug, and I'll, I'll show you in a few minutes what I have cast on. But I am pretty close to finished with this shawl. Um, the last we spoke, I was... down here and so as I mentioned before this is a triangular shawl and you knit from end to end so you start here and you increase as the pattern calls for and there's a garter stitch and then you start putting in this stocking net it works out to be a triangle by the time it's finished or a diamond rather and then once you get to the halfway point you add in a lace weight mohair so you see the color changes a little bit just slightly I like that it's a subtle change here uh, it is gorgeous the feel of it though and you start closing off the diamond and you decrease along the way and so I here I've got a little bit more to go but it, it's about 75% of the way done and since this the rows get shorter at this point every other row it's just zooming. Uh, the yarn I'm using is Woolberry Fiber Company. And I'm using her Berry Mohair Base, which is 72% mohair and 28% silk in the Antique Shop colorway. And my main color, I guess, if you will, is her Berry Merino Base, which is 100% Superwash Merino in her Sunset Walks colorway. And these are the two colors on their own. As you see, they're kind of similar. Um, this is a pale blush. It's got some creams in there, uh, some plum and eggplant, little specks of yellow, but it's just a nice, nice soft color. And I, I really have been enjoying it. Uh, the merino, the merino, the mohair uh, is also, it's got like a, I want to say a light tea brown almost. Color to it but it's got these oranges and purples sometimes a little maybe a little yellow a little pink in there but they came out they looked really nicely together and they actually they feel real nice together and I wasn't sure if I would like the mohair to be honest and once it's done and blocked I am curious to see how it wears how it feels close to the skin on the neck I'm worried about it being slightly itchy, but it doesn't feel itchy at all in my hands. But I also know that my hands are a less sensitive skin spot than you know, my chest, if you will. So, so that's that. I have quite a bit done. This will be blocked down to a point down here. And there will be tassels attached at either end and at the center point on the bottom. So I'm excited for that. Hopefully I'll have that finished for you by the next time we speak. Uh, as I mentioned, this is another pattern by Lindsay Fowler of Lost and Fawn, uh, of Lost and Fawn. She's Lost and Fawn on Instagram. But it was, it's been such a pleasure to knit and it's nice and it's, it's a calm and peaceful knit. It's really good for the end of the night when, you know, when you're, when you get home from work and the kids are finally to bed and you just you're too tired to really work on anything complicated, this is the project for you. Because you don't have to think all that much. It's it's really simple and it's meditative and there's a little bit of a change in there. It's nice that it has the stock in it in the garter. And when you get to the halfway point, you're adding in the mohair and it just, it's, it's a peaceful knit and it's something that you can work on and just reap the meditative benefits of it. You know what I mean? So, so that's, that's my Bennett sister shawl. I am really loving it. 
I was worried that this color would wash me out too much because I, I can't do pastels. As you can see, I'm not, I'm a pretty pale person myself and I find that most pastels tend to really wash me out and I look, you know, like death. So I was worried that I might have that problem with this, but I think it's got just enough that it'll be okay. And I think a, it'll actually look really nice with my coat. I have a, my main winter coat is a navy blue duffel coat. And so that'll go nice with the lightness of this. Uh, but as the weather turns and starts to get warmer, I have a very nice, I, I guess it would be like a plum or a dark cranberry trench coat, raincoat kind of deal. And I think this would look awesome with it because it's got some of those colors in here. So that's that. I'm, I'm really enjoying knitting on that. I actually... Once I started this next project, I haven't been giving it the love that I should, and that's why it's not finished yet. Uh, but you'll see, I also, actually, this past week, I haven't knit that much. I have been really, really exhausted this week. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe my brain has just been fried by the time I get home, because I've had a very heavy paperwork kind of week at work. Uh, if you don't know, I work in clinical research trials. And some weeks are very patient heavy and some weeks are more paper heavy and the paper sometimes really wears you out because it's, it's a little taxing on the brain. So, so that's that. My next project is a new cast on. And I have had my eyes on this pattern ever since it came out in the pom pom mag. Let me see if it says the, the issue on it. I can't remember. But, it's a stunner. That's all I gotta say about it. I don't think I have the issue number, but it's not the issue that just came out. I would say it's the issue before that. It probably came out in the fall. But, it is the X-Gel sweater by Katherine Clark. I-X-C-H-E-L. And I'll show you. I actually did print out a full really good full photo but it is a color work pullover and it's got this pattern along the front and the back and it's got like the phases of the moon I'm out of focus 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 okay it's got the phases of the moon and it's just got it's a heavy color work sweater all over and the front and the back both have it and it goes on the sleeves you see bands here at the sleeves so I've been, I've had yarn for this sweater for some time, and <clears throat> I've actually, I don't want to say I've been afraid to cast it on, I just knew that I needed the headspace to be able to do it, because it's, it's a lot to concentrate, there's a lot of charts, and you're doing a lot of charts simultaneously, and, you know, it's just a lot, a lot to think of, so I knew I had to finish my husband's dude sweater before I could even think about casting this on, and then I knew I had to get all the Christmas stuff done and out of the way. And then after Christmas, I really just needed some palette cleansers. So as you noticed, I've had kind of calm, quiet projects that don't require all that much mental capacity. And, and that's been good. But I was starting to get ready for more of a challenge. So, so I guess go big or go home, right? Cause that, that sweater, it's a challenge. So I am knitting it up in some yarn by Sweet Sparrow Knits. Sweet Sparrow yarn, Sweet Sparrow Knits. It's Julie. Julie is Sweet Sparrow Yarns. She sells yarn on Etsy and she also has a podcast. She hasn't put out an episode for a while. I don't think she's put anything out since Vlogmas, but I always enjoy when she has a podcast out because she's just so adorable. So I have my main color is this purple. This is great lavender. And let me get the exact color away for you if I can. If I can, if I can. Okay. It is the Joni colorway on her gosling base, which is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. So there's her card, Sweet Sparrow Yarns. And so this is her Joni colorway. 
which is a gorgeous, kind of like a lavender purple, and it's got little flecks of mm, like a pink or purple in there. And then I'm, my contrast is her Butterbeer colorway, which is this great tonal, like a golden yellow color. It's coming off, I think, a little bit brighter in person. I can't describe it. But the two of them together are really nice. And I will show you, I'm not very far along, but I will show you where I'm at. So I have finished, the, it's knit from the top down, so you start at the neck. So I finished my neck band and I have, let me just pull this through so this way I'm not. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. I'm a little twisted. Who isn't, they say. But I just want to be able to show you a little bit better. So I'm just like at the end of the spot here. Um, okay. So I'm knitting the 40 inch size uh, because I was actually between sizes. And since the sweater is meant to be worn with zero to two inches of positive V's, which means that it's pretty fitted. So negative V's is where you knit something to be a little bit smaller than your actual measurements and it stretches a bit and it's fitted. Uh, positive V's would be where you would knit something bigger than your actual measurements. And since this is supposed to be knit up with zero to two inches of positive V's, it means there's not really that much give in your size. Um, I was between sizes. I was between the 37 and the 40 inch size. I'm not going to tell you how much because, you know, it's none of your damn business. But I thought it would be better to size up rather than down in this pattern. And so I did. So I cast on my neckband and it's got a nice little ribbed neckband. And then you do some short row he short row heels, short rows in the back and the just kind of brings the back up a little bit more and you start with one of the I feel like I'm doing a terrible job of showing this off one of the charts here which is an arrow going down and then you start introducing other charts along around and there's the front to center front so you got the arrow starting here now and that's that so it's I'm almost I would say I'm about, uh, I don't even want to say how many rows I'm in. I think I'm like 11, 12, 13 rows into the color work portion of the sweater, or the body of the sweater. And there have been a few times where I've made some dumbass mistakes and I've had to take things out and rip it back and then redo it. And I don't always love ripping back and redoing it, especially with color work, but they were just they were not the kind of mistakes I could live and let live. So, so that's what you got to do. So I will say that this, now when I knit my husband's dude sweater, which I finished recently and I showed it in the last few episodes, um, that was the first time I really did a color work sweater on such a large scale, uh, as opposed to doing like just a little yoke work on a baby sweater or something along those lines. So, that was one thing, but the color work really wasn't all over the body. It was kind of just sections. Whereas this is just color work all over. And so, you know, I might get a, a row in here, a few rows in each day, and, and that's about it. So it's, I don't expect this sweater to be done anytime soon. Definitely not in time for this winter to be over. So it's really, I guess, getting it ready for next fall and winter. Um, it is a fingering weight. So with the two yarns together, I believe two fingering weights together make it worsted. I don't quote me on that because I could be wrong. Could be DK. I don't remember. But it'll be warm. It is so soft. You can really feel that cashmere in it. Um, Julie's yarns are always so, so nice and so nice to work with. And they just, they always, they feel good. So, so that's that. that that's my x -gel, I don't know how to spell it. X-Gel pattern. Uh, now the designer, Catherine Clark, is actually... I don't know if she owns Brooklyn General or if she, I know she works there. 
she's so she's she's associated with the Brooklyn General store in one way, shape or form. And I just I love that she was featured. She got the cover of the pom pom mag. And I just think that is such such a cool thing because she's just, you know, a local hometown gal, I guess, you know? And I, I just like that. I like that she's a New Yorker and she's from Brooklyn General. And I love Brooklyn General. That's all I got. I feel like I'm just going to the rest of the day. Um, that, that's all the knitting I've got working on. I have had a bit of the sewing bug hit me lately. Not that I've been sewing, but I have the desire to do so. And I just haven't had the time. So I have one dress pattern in mind that I definitely do want to start. And there's a quilt that I would like to start. So, so maybe next week I'll have something. Maybe I won't. We'll see. But that's about it. It's just been a snowy day and we were building snowmen and having a snowball fight this morning and my son was wiped. And so we took a nap and I think he's just about getting up. So I'm going to leave you all here now and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and enjoy the week ahead. Bye!